Hey everybody and welcome back to another Max Velocity weather forecast. And in today's forecast, we'll be breaking down a huge pattern change that'll be coming to the United States this weekend. And this is going to bring a massive cool down to much of the country. Might feel a little bit more like winter in some areas. In addition to this, we're gonna be talking about the storm that is still gonna bring a threat for severe weather today. That is not over yet because more massive hail, damaging winds, and even a couple of tornadoes will be possible across the southern tier of the country. I'll be giving you the latest breakdown on everything that you need to know in this forecast and let's begin first with what's happening right now across the United States today and we will begin with this large storm that is still bringing relentless showers and thunderstorms across a large chunk of the southern tier of the United States. Notice right now we actually have some very deep convection across areas in southern Mississippi and Louisiana that is associated with some pretty significant thunderstorm activity. We actually had a tornado warning in central Louisiana a few hours ago and there are still some some showers and thunderstorms ongoing here that are continuing to push down to the south, bringing the risk for some isolated damaging winds through the early to mid-afternoon hours. Eventually, the severe weather risk will start to dwindle across areas in the southeast, but we do still have a few hours left of some severe weather, so stay weather aware if you're down that direction until about 4 to 5 o'clock this afternoon. Now, back down in south Texas, it's a bit of a different story. This is an area that we are going to have some pretty significant severe weather tonight. We actually might go live for this, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel. But the area that we're going to be watching for is actually in central and southern Texas, where there will be some massive hailstorms between about 2 p.m. to about 8 p.m. It's going to be a bit of a significant threat with upwards of three inch diameter hail being possible, damaging winds, and even a couple of tornadoes being possible. And we will be breaking down this particular event for you in detail here in just a couple of minutes. And lastly, I do want to mention that there is a large low pressure system that is coming out of Canada. This is actually going to bring a lot of cold air to areas in the Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the Northeast over the next few days. And it's going to drop temperatures below freezing for many of those areas and we might even see a little bit of snow trickle in to areas in the Midwest as we go into the late weekend and we'll be talking about that here in just a moment but let's talk more about this big pattern change that's coming to the country and it's going to really be mostly about the temperatures more than anything we don't really have much more severe weather coming this weekend but we are going to have a massive temperature change and as of today we still have a warm air mass sitting on the eastern tier of the country that'll change though as we go into Saturday into Sunday notice this cold air mass will come out of Canada and this is really going to intensify because we are going to see temperatures drop well below average across the northern plains across the midwest and eventually into the ohio valley by the late weekend this is sunday morning and that cold air mass will be sitting across the northern and central plains and the midwest once we go into early monday that cold air mass will eventually move across areas in the central plains the ohio valley and it will even reach areas like florida and it will reach the east coast as we go closer to tuesday so this cold air mass definitely going to pack a punch when it comes to cold air and then once we go into wednesday and thursday that cold air mass is actually going to grow in canada and you might be thinking that's all going to be coming down into the United States, right? Unfortunately, probably not. Unless we get some sort of low pressure system that crashes down into like the Great Plains or something like that, which the European model actually does suggest as we go into late next weekend around March 25th, which is over 10 days from now. So it's really pointless to really look at this since it's probably going to change, but it is something we'll have to watch for. We might get another cold air mass. So just a friendly reminder, if you're back down in the Southern Plains, I would at least wait to plant any sensitive vegetation at least until the very end of March, because we still do have at least one more shot at maybe some below freezing temperatures there it's a relatively low chance but it definitely is still a possibility now in terms of the actual temperatures across the country they are going to drop quite a bit especially back over in the midwest in the ohio valley notice this as we go into saturday morning most areas above freezing so good news there but obviously that's going to change as we go into sunday most areas in the midwest will drop below freezing we'll have some areas in the teens maybe even some single digits in uh, northern minnesota and then once we go into monday morning that cold air mass continues continues to dive to the south and we will have that freezing line dropping all the way down into Tennessee even in some of the higher elevations of Arkansas maybe even as far to the south as northern Oklahoma and by Tuesday morning that cold air mass will start to siphon down into areas like northern and central Georgia and even down into northern and central Alabama and what that means is that you definitely want to make sure that you're protecting your sensitive vegetation because I know many of you down there may have already started to plant because obviously we're in March and you know we're getting close to spring but you definitely want to make sure you take those proper precautions going into Tuesday morning. By Wednesday morning, that cold air will start to retreat back to the north. And then by Wednesday afternoon, temperatures are going to be right back into the 70s across much of the Great Plains. It's going to get really warm really quickly. And eventually that warm air will start to retreat back to the south as we go into Thursday with that cold air mass lingering back over in areas like Canada. And this is the wind chills, by the way, Monday morning. I just want to show you this for perspective here across like the Midwest, for example. Many areas will feel like the single digits and even in the teens. But notice back up here in Canada, many areas will feel as 
low as 30 degrees below zero. Thank goodness we're not dealing with this because obviously I know a lot of you are not looking forward to cold weather. I know a lot of you are looking forward to spring and summer weather in the Midwest. That'll be coming to a store near you here pretty soon, especially across the Midwest. All right, let's talk more about the timing with showers and storms here across the country. Any big storms on the horizon? Let's go right through the future radar and give you an idea of what's on the horizon. Then we'll be talking about that severe weather threat for today. And you'll actually notice that here on the future radar, those showers and thunderstorms across areas in the Gulf Coast region back down in South Texas. We're going to continue to monitor that threat this afternoon and evening for some severe weather. But notice this as we go into late Friday night, we are going to have that low pressure system back up in Canada that not many people are talking about. This is actually going to bring the potential for some snow in the far upper Midwest. But more than anything, this is what's going to bring the cold air mass to much of the country. Notice this as we go into Saturday morning, maybe some passing flurries or light snow across the uh, upper Midwest, like northern Wisconsin. Showers and thunderstorms will continue Saturday, even down in South Texas. And as we go into Sunday, that cold air mass starts to usher in. Notice all these contours here. This is all the cold air advection that'll be starting to plow behind that low pressure system into areas like the Midwest by Sunday. Eventually by Monday, a little bit of snow perhaps across the Great Lakes region, but again, very light stuff overall. No significant snowfall accumulation is in the forecast. By the time we go into Tuesday and Wednesday, things really dry across much of the country. Thank goodness we're not dealing with any more severe weather events in the near future. Once we get closer to Wednesday and to Thursday, a little bit of snow across the Northeast and eventually by Thursday into Friday, maybe a little bit of snow in the Midwest, but it becomes again very uncertain. Now, as we get closer to Thursday and Friday of next week, things become very uncertain since we are talking about an event that's over seven days out from now, but we may see a large storm develop again in the Southern Plains. This one will be something to watch for. It shows a large nor'easter in the Northeast. I highly doubt that's going to happen, but with that being said, this obviously could bring at least the potential for some severe weather in the Southern Plains by next Friday, but there is still a large amount of uncertainty with that. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel. We'll be keeping you posted with the latest as that begins to become more of a possibility. All right, let's talk more about that severe weather potential for today. There is actually an enhanced risk of severe weather in far Southern Texas. This is a pretty small area overall. Uh, main concern today will be large to very large hail in this particular region, upwards of three inch diameter hail as possible. We do have a marginal and slight risk that go all the way back through the Gulf Coast, but the majority of that severe weather, at least at the time that this forecast is being uploaded, is beginning to wind down. So not nearly as much of a concern. It's mostly through the early to mid afternoon hours. Main concern again is large to very large hail. We do have a hatched area all the way back through Houston, Texas, by the way. So be mindful if you're in the Houston area, definitely make sure that you are protecting your vehicles because there will be some significant hail potential tonight. And then also damaging winds, not really the main concern, but there will be some damaging winds up to 70 miles per hour. Should remain an isolated threat. Tornado risk is on the lower side of things, but maybe an isolated tornado or two across South Texas cannot be ruled out. Definitely going to be an interesting area to watch for tonight. We also might go live for this this afternoon or evening, so make sure that you're subscribed to the channel and click the bell icon down below so you're notified if and when we do go live. This is the timing for today, so around 2 o'clock, storms will begin to fire up pretty quickly. These, are, again, are going to be mainly hail producers. A little bit more of an elevated tornado risk with the storms that fire off to the west of San Antonio. Those ones in particular have a slightly more elevated tornado risk, but some significant hail is still in the picture there. Once we get closer to 4 to 5 o'clock, those storms continue pushing east. Houston, be on alert around 6 o'clock. Some significant hail will be possible. By 6 to 7, storms moving into San Antonio with large to very large hail being a possibility. Eventually, by 8 to 9 o'clock, a lot of these storms are beginning to fizzle back over er near areas in Houston and Beaumont. We will still be watching for some damaging wind potential and large hail near San Antonio all the way through about 10 to 11 o'clock tonight. And then eventually, outflow-driven storms likely after midnight. That should be mostly a damaging wind threat by then. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit the like button down below and subscribe if you've not already.